Hi and welcome to May's edition of Green Fingered Tips. Uh, I'm Mark Smith. Uh, today we haven't got uh, Graham uh, Drayton uh, with us, but uh, as you may know on previous shows, I always tell him that this uh, gardening lark is a uh, child's play. So I thought today we would have a child. And uh, this is uh, Lewis Smith, who's uh, my son, and he's going to be uh, helping me today doing a summer container. Um, we've got various uh, summer uh, bedding uh, around at the moment so uh, we're just going to take you through the stages of uh, planting up a container so first of all talk about the uh, container now a lot of uh, a lot of uh, containers that people use are nice and dark and dreary looking either greys and blues but the a lot of modern ones now come in these uh, pastel colors i, I picked this uh, bright pink color because it's uh, pink is lewis's favorite color no not really <laughs> And uh, so I've drilled some uh, drainage uh, holes in there because it actually comes with um, without drainage holes. So when you do select a pot, make sure it's got drainage holes in, especially if you're doing uh, outdoor plants like uh, summer bedding. So I'm just going to gracefully move over this way and we're going to uh, talk, uh, talk about the compost. So the compost that's going to go in it, um, you could use a multi-purpose uh, compost, uh, which is perfectly fine for doing uh, containers, uh, but I've, I've actually got one here, which is for containers and uh, baskets, uh, specially formulated, very, very light, easy to use, and got uh, enough nutrients in to uh, last for summer bedding. So because we've got children around, we, uh, we can't use knives, so a good tip, is instead of using a knife, is using a, a colour label. You go straight across there, you see that opens it up. It's almost like magic. So, we've got the uh, compost. Now, you can help me, Lewis, if you want to. Just grab okay. some compost. But as you put it in the pot, it doesn't matter if you make a mess, if you, when, as you're putting it in the pot, just crumble it up to make sure okay. there's no lumps in it. So just fill the pot up. Hopefully it won't take... Uh, too long. This is really nice and light and airy. It's uh, it's compressed in the bag, but as soon as you break it up, it's it's very light and airy. It's got plenty of drainage in, and you can actually see the little beads of, uh, of fertilizer, which are the blue beads in this case, uh, that will last it, uh, last uh, the pot uh, almost four months. Uh, I would always suggest throughout the uh, the growing season to. Uh, to uh, liquid feed as well as because summer bedding does tend to be quite greedy and you do need to keep feeding uh, with a liquid feed throughout the year and making sure that you keep deadheading as well so uh, and that will uh, prolong the blooms right up to uh, the first frosts in October uh, November time or until the very very early frosts so we're about there so that's nice and full We'll just press it down a little bit so it's not got too many air gaps in there and that's uh, not too firm but it's not too uh, light as well so traditionally you could put something like uh, this is a uh, american uh, geranium uh, nice bright vibrant color geraniums are absolutely fantastic um, really luminous colours and that's the traditional uh, thing that you would use as a centrepiece for a container or you would use something like a fuchsia or a osteospernum or something like that but Lewis has chose uh, a cord lime palm which uh, is uh, this is a, a new variety this one is a uh, pink passion uh, there's several of these pink varieties out cherry sensation pink passion uh, and dazzler um, but this one's um, pink passion it's an evergreen uh, palm it actually as you can see on the picture there it does make a proper palm tree makes uh, a size uh, during this year probably three to four feet but makes the perfect centerpiece it's a uh, architectural plant uh, doesn't uh, require any dead henning because it doesn't have uh, this particular one doesn't have a flower so if you place that in the dead center lewis just get rid of the pot so that's that's perfect so then that's your centerpiece now a lot of people still make the mistake 
of trying to fill the outsides first of the pot and then putting a the centerpiece in the middle, which I think is crazy. Uh, you always work from the center outwards. So Lewis has positioned that in the center. We'll just quickly uh, top the sides up uh, with compost. Just let me, uh, it's great having a, an assistant like Lewis who can <laughs> do all the uh, hard work. Thank you. And um, so we're almost there. Straight away. I mean, it's the uh, obviously the uh, the pink cord line complements the, uh, the pink pot, so that's one of the other reasons why we we selected this cord line because it's all about uh, colour coordinate uh, coordinating. I mean uh, that doesn't really uh, flow with uh, with guys, more uh, ladies, but uh, uh, it's it does. Uh, that's what you need to do. You get a much better effect, and because of the colour of the pot straight away you're getting colour instantly before the plants really start to uh, show signs of flowers. So you've got a nice looking pot already there without any uh, summer bedding in. So we're just going to add the summer bedding. Like I say, very easy thing to do. I'm just going to uh, we'll grab a petunia. Oh, just uh, pull that out, there we go. And if we place it around the side, right uh, butted up against the edge, there we go, that's the first one. So. What we do is give you the next one. There we go. So that's the next one that's gone in is a uh, begonia. And the reason I picked these particular begonias is because I've got the nice uh, purple leaf, dark purple leaf that contrasts really well with the pot. And then they've got the pink flowers as well. But begonias come in basically green or purple form. And then you can have red, pink or white flowers. So quite a quite different combination there. And uh, just to add in yet extra colour, but the, these are, you know, just to lighten it up a little bit. This is white uh, trailing lobelia. And uh, the, I wanted something to trail over the sides to give a little bit of colour and just soften the edges up. So we're using white trailing lobelia as a bit of a, a contrast in colours. So if you want to stick that next to the, uh, next to the begonia, very good. So, We've, we've already got the petunia, the begonia, and the lobelia that Lewis has put in there. Um, so all we do now is just simply uh, carry on the pattern right the way around. So uh, the next one is a petunia again, which I uh, hand to Lewis and he puts next to the lobelia. And then, I, I almost feel like your assistant, rather than you're my assistant. Really? Yeah. It's, uh, I seem to be doing all the work here. <laughs> and then the lobelia, and then petunia again. And straight away you're building up this, uh, the petunias will fill out, very, very large flowers, very, um, there we go, petunia. Very showy flowers petunias are, and they, they've got like a bush habit, so they become very, very bushy, and they'll fill out, and the begonias likewise uh, will fill out as well. So what do we have next? Uh, lobelia. Lobelia. And then it's a petunia again. See, some of these haven't got any flowers, but they've got flower buds coming, so they will soon start to uh, come into flower and look really uh, attractive and then the next one along is a begonia and then it's uh, lobelia so there we go now and that works out absolutely perfect so the combinations are there and it's made the perfect ring so what we do now is we fill in uh, the gaps with the uh, compost and that's it. It's just as simple as that. It was uh, nothing um, too hard. We don't fill it up too much because we don't want to bury the uh, cordial line. We're just filling up enough to cover the roots of the of the bedding, the summer bedding plants. And this is uh, clearly a lot easier than a hanging basket to do. Uh, anybody who saw last year's uh, May edition where I was attempting to fill a hanging basket with Graham uh, saw that uh, even though it was an easy filled basket I was making an absolute pig's ear of it. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't my fault, it was a hanging basket's fault obviously. Um, so, um, but this, very very simple and like I say it's, uh, it's almost like um, 
well it is, it's like child's play and uh, Lewis has done an absolute cracking job of that. Um, he's uh, much better than, uh, than his daddy at uh, planting up uh, containers. And, uh, and that is it. And within, um, say, because straight away it looks nice, straight away, but in two to three weeks, that will fill out, the labelia will cascade, uh, cascade down here, start to come into flower, and within two to three weeks it'll look like a proper filled, uh, full hanging basket. And uh, I think that is an absolute superb job. So, I think that uh, job's done. It's very good, so we'll high five. Well done. And uh, that's your summer uh, container done in uh, sort of less than uh, 10 minutes and uh, with the uh, aid of a child so the moral of the story is get a child in to help you um we're going to uh, go and have a look at what uh, we're going to have as plant of the month this month So we've come outside um, for plant of the month. Now, if we get interrupted by any kind of grinding noise while we're doing this, uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, here at Swartz Nursery, uh, we're building a garden, and you know, that, the garden is for our restaurant, uh, an outdoor seating area for our restaurant, and it's going to have a fully fledged garden in there. And uh, it's something that we've been looking forward to for quite some time, and one of the reasons why we were doing the uh, gardening program was to be able to do that in the garden. So in the very, very near future, they're actually starting on it today. So, uh, in the, but in the very near future, we'll be doing the uh, uh, green finger tips straight from the garden and uh, showing you various different tips when you're uh, planting uh, your own garden. The great thing about doing a garden from scratch is we'll be able to see the garden grow and develop see uh, things that we've got right and more importantly see things that we've got wrong and uh, rectify those so it'd be really interesting uh, to see uh, that in the next couple of months and like i say uh, that will be featuring those on uh, green finger tips on uh, in the coming months so back to um, plant of the month uh, and this is a, a favorite of mine uh, clearly the uh, the pink one here is lewis's favorite because of the color and uh, the um, Scabies is fantastic, it, it uh, flowers from the beginning of February, uh, little tiny flower buds, uh, you keep deadheading them and uh, they keep repeat flowering. Now Scabies, even though it's planted a month this month, uh, there's always something really nice to show you, but uh, the reason I've included that this month is because of the longevity of the plant and you really get good value for money uh, with Scabies. Um, it's great for bees and butterflies, which is always important, isn't it, Lewis, to have bees and butterflies in your garden. So um, all you have to do is just simply, when one of the flowers looks a little bit tatty, is you take the flower head off and it starts to send up uh, new uh, flower buds. And if you keep doing that, this will carry on flowering until August or September of this year. So long, long flowering time, uh, bags of flower, stays very neat, only about a foot tall by a foot wide. So you can have this in a container, in a small border, uh, absolutely fantastic plant. So scabious, uh, we've got uh, pink mist uh, here, which is a pink, and butterfly blue, which uh, Lewis is holding there. Both do exactly the same thing and longer flowering time, so well worth having those in your garden. What's jobs of the month? Well, what's jobs of the month? Well, jobs of the month this month, uh, because we've already moved into uh, bedding season, is the most important thing if you're planting up containers like you saw earlier on is keep well watering with the weather keeps up and it keeps nice and warm then you're going to have to carry on uh, watering uh, almost on a daily basis uh, more importantly is make sure you keep deadheading uh, any summer bedding to prolong flowering uh, period and uh, prune back any spring flowering shrubs that have been and gone and you've forgotten about. Any spring flowering shrubs like Spirea, Forsythia, uh, uh, flowering currant rhymes, which are all flowering early on in the season, they need to be cut back now, ready for long flowering periods uh, next year. Uh, it's really important to get that uh, job done uh, uh, immediately. Can I put this down, Daddy? Yeah, of course you can, of course you can. Okay. <laughs> So, new for, new for this month, uh, nothing to say about you, but this is problem of the month. 
Okay, so this uh, problem of the month, this is a, a indoor bamboo that we got this from uh, Jill from Burton, and she said she was a little bit worried about the way that the uh, the leaves were looking, looking a little bit sick, and especially these uh, brown leaves. Now, having had a look at the uh, plant, uh, the plant looks fine actually, nice and green in the centre. It has got some new shoots on there, and I was a little bit worried because the compost was quite uh, moist and uh, looking on me thinking that it hadn't got its beautiful pot but it hadn't got a drainage hole but it has it has actually got a drainage hole so i think uh what jill's done there is it's got a saucer underneath uh having spoken to it, it's got a saucer underneath and uh, with water in it all the time and obviously it's taking it up and that's great if you're um if you're going to be away from it for a long time um bamboos need to be moist but not overly wet and the compost is quite wet so i think the coloration and leaf where it's starting to look a little bit yellow is the fact that it's 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 kind of in damp uh, soil all the time and then we've got a few brown leaves there uh, crispy brown leaves that might have been scorched or it might be just uh, again uh, these yellow leaves turning brown to fall off it's not a problem you let the uh, compost dry out a little bit maybe just water it from the top uh, Jill said that she was uh, watering it with distilled water uh, you can water it with distilled water not a problem but tap water is just as fine you know there's no no problem there you don't have to uh, use distilled water on it um, but just water it from the top and then any excess will drain into that source underneath and then it can take up that so certainly don't leave any water um, in this source uh, to make it waterlogged and uh, some of these leaves the worst leaves will go brown and fall off you just clean those off and then it'll start sending out bright green new shoots and hopefully put on some extra new growth so uh, thanks for that Jill uh, it's nice to have uh, something different to talk about on the show and uh, if you do if you do that let it dry out a little bit and, uh, and don't overwater it then that will come back lovely and make a fantastic plant so um, the way to uh, contact us uh, here at Swartz Nursery if you've got any problems uh, like Jill's is uh, on Swartz Nursery telephone which is 01332 700 800 or you can email your problems in with photos which always uh, helps and um, it's uh, info at Swarkston Nursery, remembering the E in Swarkston, see it's not as good as Graham, uh, nursery.co.uk, so that's info at swarkstonnursery.co.uk, uh, sending photos, uh, sending your emails uh, for all your problems. We're also on, we've also have a Facebook page which is, uh, if you look on Facebook and put in the search bar, uh, Swarkston Nursery, again remembering the E in Swarkston, and, uh, and then you'll find our page there and you can send us private messages or like us or join us as a friend and that kind of thing. And we can uh, swap uh, problems uh, there. Or you can contact btvn at burtontvnews.co.uk and send your uh, problems in there. You can actually upload uh, videos as well of your problems to uh, uh, Burton TV and uh, they can pass them on to me and we can answer your questions uh, on the show as well. So thanks for watching and uh, we shall see you in uh, June uh, for June's edition and hopefully we'll be in the garden uh, at that point. So it's bye bye from me and bye bye from Lewis. Say bye bye. Bye bye.